Just a few things to think about. When did Barry Morphew contact Trevor? Because I'm certain that he would have contacted him on Sunday night. At what time? Was it the sort of short call that you might expect when someone goes, hey mate, I've got a call into uh, Denver tomorrow. Can I stay overnight on Sunday? Okay, see you soon. Or was it a telephone call that went on for a long time? Were there texts and calls back and forth? Saturday night. Or, you know, did Barry actually go through the motions of booking a hotel or motel room in Denver near this supposed job site? When did he cancel whatever was happening with the job site? Was Barry Morphew expecting to come home on Monday afternoon and find that his wife wasn't home? Does he normally work on building sites on his own? I mean, you know, he'd have the skills, he'd have the abilities, got the equipment. Probably would do a lot of work himself. And I'm talking about the Salida job. Uh, because, you know, you do save money where you can. Um, you're not hiring labour when you can do it yourself. But, you know, is that normal for him to go on sites and lay concrete foundations and things on his own? Is this out of pattern? Would he normally have a couple of young lads with him? Um, or an offsider working with him? I'm taking it that he had already started on the site and he had equipment out there that uh, the neighbour had heard in the past. But, um, yeah dropped one job site and it's not like he um, just dropped both of them for a while because his wife was missing. He still managed to turn up to work at Salida, go and do that concrete foundation. Was it to keep his mind off things, was it? Is it a red herring? I have a feeling there's smoke and mirrors here, quite a lot of them. Barry the project manager. So yeah, just so many questions, but I really want to know the phone records between Trevor and Barry. Love to see those. Miss Jane Australia was just making a quick video about, you know, the wild at heart Christian wife stuff. And, yeah, it reminded me, um, uh, a friend of mine from when I was a teenager and in my first job and, um, my friend had grown up in a Christian household and used to go to all sorts of jamborees and things, which is where all the teenagers get together so maybe they can find, uh, other Christian husbands and wives um, yeah well she used to um, you know know a lot of people from there and boys had crushes on her because she's spirited and funny and gorgeous and smart and um, she's the one that's wild at heart and um, yes decades later after an eventful life she's become a born-again Christian and she's reconnected with this chap, one of these chaps that was a little older than her and um, they've had this whirlwind and gotten married and they were having trouble before they even got married but you know, my strong willed friend had said no I want to, um, I want to be the wife, I want to be traditional roles, I want a husband that does tell me what's happening and makes the decisions and that's the Christian relationship, the marriage that I'm going to have with this chap. And um, knowing her and everything, this sounded like a really bad idea to me, but okay. So he was her wild at heart sweetie. He was her wild at heart sweetie that for all his persona of being a missionary, of being, you know, someone who'd go and build houses for humanity and, you know, 
both of them committing time and energy and money to the church. You know, for all of this, he was a complete narcissistic wanker. And if he came home late when the tea was cold and my friend, his wife, if she was sitting in the house with more than two lights on, oh, look, hell to pay. He wants her to sit there in the dark with one little lamp because, you know, how dare you waste the electricity. I mean, he wanted to rule every little bit of life. It wasn't, it wasn't a traditional male-female role. No, this was pure subjugation. This was pure subjugation to a narcissist who would belittle my friend, who would control my friend, who made her life hell and a misery. And yet, here you have this beautiful couple. Isn't it wonderful how they found each other? Found each other after their tough lives, husband that had been through the divorce and, you know, they'd found each other, reconnected, oh, such a beautiful love story, you know, so very tough decision for my friend, but soon after, you know, she did have to leave him and go home to her parents with her child, whom she'd had prior to this marriage, um, you know, and feel like she'd failed, but she was beaten down emotionally and mentally by this Christian fellow because she wanted to have a traditional role and she let him, you know, change how she, how she was in the world, her place in the world, her meaning in the world. He took a beautiful spirited, smart woman who had had a career and a life and looked after herself throughout her life from an early age and turned her into a distraught, depressed, paranoid, scared, boxed in shell of a person. So, you know, what a disgusting pig he was. She knew the signs, but oh well. Um, yeah, it happens, you know. It happens, these beautiful marriages, these Christian marriages. Um, how people are encouraged in these relationships to have these so-called traditional roles. Well, they're not traditional secular roles as I see them. They're far worse. And they leave room for, for nasty people to abuse women rape psychological abuse love bombing they go through it all and all whilst being good Christians people having relationships personal relationships with Jesus so I think we really need to take out of the equation anything to do with Christianity with those sort of values and things because they're very easily warped and you just need to look at the psychology of each person. You know, what did Barry think his life was going to be like afterwards? If it's premeditated, it's quite different. This is allegedly, allegedly, I'm speculating, I'm human animal, have you met me? You know, if it's premeditated, it is a different story because you think you're quite prepared to live the rest of your life living this lie and you know <laughs> um but if it's a spur of the moment rage you know barry was able to make some quick decisions and act quickly make some decisions about what was going to happen and where and how um but you know that's the kind of man i think he he probably is um quite capable of that um you know but is he now realising, does he realise what this means for his life to carry on this uh, facade, uh, this, this, um, sorry, you know, to carry on this farce? Is he truly prepared to live his life with his daughters, knowing what he may have done, you know, allegedly, um, and to live these lies for another 50 years? Uh, you know, it's going to take a huge toll. Aren't you better just to move through it, live with some integrity and at least be able to face and, and move forward in a different way, in the way of truth? 
Jesus said, I am the way and the truth of the li and the life. And, um, you know, what way, what truth, what, what life is Barry going to be left with? How do you think premeditated versus a moment of rage, an accident, how do, how do you think each of these options affect Barry's mindset, how Barry is going to be viewing the rest of his life? And the decisions that he's going to make, the relationships he's going to have with his daughters. Yeah, what do you think? But yeah, wouldn't you like to know, when did he call Trevor? When was it arranged for Trev Trevor? Did he, th uh, you know, is it just one of those things he's going to say? I wouldn't have to let him know in advance. I could just knock on his door to stay. You know, it was a last minute thing to go to Denver. It can't have been because it's a Monday morning start. These things aren't just last minute. So, where are the, you know, where is the phone call from the property developer or the owner of this site or, or what have you, you know? I'm sure FBI are looking into the minutiae of that. I hope they are. Um, it's the kind of thing that I like investigating if I had the ability to get my hands on these sort of things that's what I would be doing and that's my timeline um, I'd be very interested in someone that has the capability there in America to get in touch with things and to follow things through to actually start that kind of timeline and yeah put it into the profiling um, profiling evil evidence folder <laughs> anyway this is oh my goodness 11 minutes and 49 seconds I'm um, just waffling away here yeah my mind is racing on um, Suzanne Morphew's fate and situation she, she went through enough in life and you know death dying Dying, dying, you know, unless you're shot and it's instant or something like that. I mean, I mean, dying, it's it's a very, very, um, the process, the process of taking life and of, for the person going through the process of dying, this is intense. This is something, it's indelibly on Barry's mind. I mean, you know, he can kill a, a noble bear, he can kill a noble tiger or whatever he's killing, these beautiful, beautiful creatures. But Barry doesn't think twice about snuffing out beauty, snuffing out powerful creatures, sentient creatures that he's not killing for food, he's killing for sport, he's killing for power. He's, you know, this is what hunters of those creatures are doing. Barry wasn't out, let me just say, Barry wasn't out hunting wild boar and filling his freezer in the mountains, putting food on the table for banquets and feasts at times of the year for traditional meals and things like that. No, Barry, Barry was killing animals for the sake of killing for the sake of having dominion over an animal that has that he has no right interfering with their life and you know i i hate the fact that Barry is a hunter can you imagine him in the woods watching the house perhaps D did he did he storm out of his house to think about what he was going to do? Was Suzanne in that house and he's outside in the woods? She's so vulnerable there. What do her family not know about her life and how sick must that make them feel? How sick must it make them feel in hindsight if there's things that they have recognized or seen and turned their back on if there's conversations that they haven't had things that they just didn't want to ask speak to you later